So, it's tool review time. I bought this aftermarket battery off of Amazon. Um, Enerdrup. Anyways, came with these fantastic gloves that are for keeping your hands from dirty, according to the ad. So you can see the fingers don't go all the way down. <laughs> kind of funny looking gloves. They're a little awkward to use. But anyways, I have no idea why they decided to send these with the battery, but they did. So, they're package package deal. <laughs> so, this is supposedly a 4 amp hour battery. Um, I've used it a little bit. You can see it's dinged up, but I've only probably used it a week. You know, so it's a couple of charges and discharges. One thing is Already, you charge it up and only shows three bars. When it was new, it showed four bars. I tested this battery. Well, at first it worked fine for a couple weeks, and then it started showing that it was, wasn't was holding a charge fully. Um, and then, just recently, uh, I did a test on the battery. You saw that earlier, and found that it wasn't holding a charge did not put on nearly the, the amps that uh, the amp hours that I expected so or that it was rated for um, about half of what was expected and now it shows that it's just got one bar and won't charge and the charger says it's, it's defective so I'm pretty sure one bank of batteries in here is bad so I take this I should take this off don't need any surprises. It still comes off, so I don't need the hot pink hockey tape. This battery is defective. Um, I talked to the, the the Amazon seller, and they offered me a new battery at a discount. And at first, I was like, I don't really want just a discount but then they said a 99% discount so I said ah, that sounds like a deal to me so I got a new one of these coming paid like 34 cents for it um, so we will see um, what that battery ends up being being like this one could just be a dud they seem like they were trying to do the right thing um, they offered to replace it um, asked me just a few questions, so they they trusted me that it was really bad and wasn't like you know because I could theoretically be just trying to get batteries a free battery from them, um, not that I would do that, but they don't know that, so they they trusted me. They didn't require me to do any weird tests or anything. Just verify that the charger I was using was the right type of charger, and explain to them what happened. So, and we'll see what the insides are. I wanted to, I was going to open up this battery anyways, um, but I <laughs> delayed a little bit because I wanted to see if they wanted me to re send this back to them. I figured <laughs> it had signs of being opened. Um, apart now, let's see. Uh, oh, and we are in. Ooh. Signs of corrosion. So I just noticed that brown staining there. That's not good. Let's see. Pretty rough mold. See the machining marks in it. Um, probably ABS. This doesn't look too bad. There's a board, relatively good connections. These guys are soldered on. Pretty beefy wires. Oh, that's a well, I might have done that taking it apart. Oh, yeah, this was not put together right. Look at the end of that. That's all, all mashed over. But that shouldn't, well, so it was not assembled correctly.
slides out. Ooh, look at that. So, I don't think I got this battery pack wet, but it certainly shows signs of corrosion. I don't know. I'm trying to think. Well, anyways. Well, that's probably my problem. That's That connector is not connected at all there. Um... So look at all that corrosion. These spot welds just broke. Because the battery see did seem to be working, and that one's not connected either. Um, and then I had it in a, in a light, and the light fell, and then suddenly it stopped working. And so I would explain it, these connections broke. Um, I don't know if I can re-solder those or not. Um, might be something to, to try. Maybe big transistor type things, but they're missing a leg, so maybe they're acting as diodes? Seems like an odd thing to do. 3 3.7, 3.8, 3.8, 3.9, 3.8. So the cells actually seem like they're okay. It's just these uh, tab connections. So, let's see, if I bend those up, then I can clean them and then possibly attach them back down again. All right, I'm going to do some cleaning and some research about soldering those, see if it's a good idea. So, according to some random guy on the internet, um, you can solder on these, but you want to be careful not to get too much heat into the battery. So if you use a really hot iron and do it quickly, um, it should work and it, nobody should die. Um, so, since I'm supposed to be using high heat, I'm using my butane soldering iron, which, puts, which I know puts out a lot more heat than my electric one. Um, Got it turned all the way up. Um, I get my safety squints. Um, mother on speed dial. Or maybe I should just <laughs> dial 9 1 just in case. Be ready. So let's see. There we go. These three are soldered on there. This guy, only one tab is on. Ah, focus. So, this guy, only one tab is on, but rather than risk it soldering, leave that one there. So, um, that's soldered too. Probably not the best connection over in this rusty one, but once again, I'm going to not mess with it. This side looks perfect. 18 and a half volts so yeah let's put this back together again and hopefully it works better look at the board running out of battery in the camera pretty good sized board on there I don't know much about it um, these are probably the balancing lines ISR18650 C17 D is the part number. Alright, of the cells. So I'll look those up. They might be okay cells. Um, I don't know if I need to do any more digging into them, but that's what I've got now. I gotta put it back together again and we'll see if it takes a charge. So let's take a look inside a real Ryobi battery pack. Um, you saw the other one just took a normal uh, Torx. This guy actually has the security Torx, so I'm gonna have to get have to get out my uh, security security bit box. Um, what are those Torx one? No. Torx T15. Yep, T15. So 
had this battery for several years. I have no idea how old it is. Um, but it still works, so it'll be interesting to see um, what's inside. This one tested a little bit low as far as what you'd expect for milliamp hours, but like I said, it is several years old, so see it's it's been around the block some. It's got the foam on it, expanding foam, um, dropped a few times. One of these even, I don't know if it was this one or not, went in the water. <laughs> so, oh, it's glued right into the bottom, it's stuck right into the bottom. Probably that foam stuff. And we are in. So, Again, 18650 cells. Let's see if we foam padding, rubber thing for it to sit into. That's what it was stuck down onto. So, pretty good strain relief. You can see this pack got wet also, um, but it appears to be okay. The connections. This foam, off. The foam just destroys itself. So these are Sanyo cells. The UR18650. Yeah, Sanyo. I see that right now. UR. This is a, I don't know much about 18650 cells. This heat sink is significantly bigger than what was on that that other no name or Energrup battery. Um, so bigger is generally better, so um, I don't see anything else really bad about this battery, bad or good. I mean, I, I like the foam around it. Um, these connections seem pretty good. Not exactly the neatest bends around the corners, but um, it's held up. Seems like it's better shock resistance than that other battery. This one says right on the case that it's made out of ABS down in there. Um, better looking mold than the other one. I don't know if that's a problem in here or a problem inside. So, we're going to do a test to see, or I'm going to do a test, to see how many electrons are actually stored in this thing. Now, to do that, I have this beauty. Now, what is this? Well, this was, or was made to condition NICAD batteries. I made this a while ago. Um, let's see, it's a thing of beauty. Um, nothing particularly fancy. These five different 10 ohm resistors with pieces of metal on there for, for a heat sink. Um, so five 10 ohm resistors in parallel. That's a two ohm load and it's got a fan. So fan blows through, cools the resistors, and um, should be able to get me a pretty accurate measurement of how many milliamps this battery can, or how many amps this battery can actually put out. We're back in the, with the uh, two ohm resistor, and we are going to test the repaired Energrup, 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 battery. Um, so last time we got like a one and a half, one and a half, um, whatchamacallers, amp hours. Um, my guess is this time we'll get three. That's my prediction. Um, why three? If only had one bad cell. Well, I believe that one was draining down first, it was knew that one of its cells was low and was shutting off. So that's my theory. Right. The rubber band was not working so well on this one. So I've got this guy, piece of an old Ryobi drill, fits on there perfect. And that side <laughs> Oh, there we go. Green on ground. There we go. Ground. 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 
ground. Power. Power. So, we're up at. We're up at 20.8 volts, about where the other one was when it was fully charged. And all right on your mark, gets get set, go. There we go. We're at a 15 minutes or so. Um, we're down to 17 volts. So we're at 20 minutes, just dropped below 17 volts. A full pull, according to my calculations, will be 26 minutes, 24 minutes, and then we just hit, we're just in 15 volts. Oh, it's, look at that drop. So we're gonna go down to, oh, there we go, shut off, 15 and a half volts. So is 0.4 hours times 9 amps is 3.6 amp hours. So uh, let's get this thing of death off there. That's just waiting to short out. All right. So the energy up battery, um, not too bad. Uh, is it worth the money, it's half price about from the Ryobi. It's 40 something dollars. The other ones are 70 something dollars or 38 dollars or something and the Ryobi is like um, 70 something. So close to half price. So half price lasts almost as long as what they say. Probably under, if you tested it under their conditions, you might be able to get that four amp hours depending on your discharge rates and whatever else. Um, so, but the rust inside and the badly welded connections um, make me a little suspicious. Um, but this might just be a bad one. I will take apart the replacement one I get and take a look at those um, spots weld joints and see how they look and see if there's any corrosion in that one. Like I said, I don't think I got this battery wet. Um, I got a replacement batter battery from Energup. Um, the, the other one, as we saw earlier, had bad connections in the inside. They weren't welded well. The tabs weren't so they fell off. So I got another one. So this one comes with those same pair of lovely gloves for keeping your hands from dirty. Um, the other pair, oh yeah, here's the other pair. So now, nothing wrong with the gloves, but now I've got two pairs, except for uh, thumb. Well, I guess they're weird. So, two pairs of gloves. Uh, oh, a thank you card and they have a Enerdrop support or Enerdrop service at hotmail.com for their service. So, <laughs> you guys can read that. I, I kid you not, a Hotmail address for their service. I contacted them um, directly through or through Amazon and they were nice enough. They uh, asked me a few questions about my battery and how I charged it and stuff and I answered them and they decided that they would send me a new battery. Oh, interesting. This one this is is different. It's got different screws. The other one was Torx. This guy's Phillips and it's a different color. Same thing. Stickers peeling off a little bit but I can stick that back down again. Um, yeah, four watt hours made in China. All right, so should be interesting. Here I thought it was going to be the same battery as I had before. Um, several companies on e on um, 
Amazon selling what appear to be pretty much the identical battery with a different name on them. And this points out to um, them just buying batteries from manufacturers and sticking their name on them. Because I wouldn't think they'd change the screws and the plastic color. But maybe they did. Maybe I'm getting the new version. So yeah, this is a completely different board from what the other one had. This one was sitting down correctly so that the tabs weren't broken. Um, let's pull off these guys. Yeah, different tabs. This doesn't say ABS on it, and it feels slightly stiffer than the other one, but that could be just my imagination. This is interesting. This says on the board, lithium Ry, probably lithium Ryobi P108 version 1.1. So, I don't remember the other one having that on there, but maybe this is their version 2. Um, giant pad there for plus. This is connected directly to the battery. The battery pack, those two are. Those are the, connected to the tabs. And I don't really like how it has to run along the circuit board trace on both sides. Maybe they need to on this side because of these diodes do something. Or, um, oh, that's what it is. It has to run through the MOSFETs here. Or big ass transistors. This side, I don't think it needs to. This one could be directly connected. Seems like it would be better having a wire rather than rely on the board. Um, this side seems to be well soldered. I like these little paper rings because they would help stop from shorting. Um, all right, well, I guess we'll put it back together and I'll run a test on it. I was, originally, I was going to skip doing a test on this battery because I figured if it's the same as the other one, using the same cells it should have the same life but it's different different cells different everything so I have my new Enerdrup battery it's different than the old one um, different cells different case different pretty much everything except for stickers um, so I'm gonna test this one and see how many amps it or amp hours it'll put out so that's There we go. I will check back in. Well, we're at a little over 15 minutes and down to 17 volts. So it's keeping going. So we're at 20 minutes and we just dropped under 17 volts. Which I think is pretty similar to the other battery if I remember right. 22 minutes. Uh, It'll be close to the other one. I don't think this one will make a full pull either, but it's going to be pretty darn close to that other one. And 24 minutes and still going. Voltage is getting down there, but it's still working. I think 26 minutes is a full pull. We'll come real close to that. Oh yeah, we're dropping fast now. Made it 26 minutes. Um, it might have gone a little longer, um, but the voltage was dropping really quick, and I'd rather not damage my new battery. So, 26 minutes. Let's get out the calculator. 4.3 hours times 9 amps is 3.9 amp hours. So, yeah. 
pretty much a full pull on that one. So while they're definitely not the best made batteries overall, you know, not too bad. I mean, this one had those bad welded connections on the inside that could have been a fluke. The other one seems better. Um, who knows? So it is a bit of a gamble, but the warranty, they covered it while they're still in business. Um, as long as their Hotmail account keeps active, they should be able to um, keep servicing uh, their batteries. So it's a, it is a gamble, but I'd say in this case, it's probably worth it. If I run into any other problems, I'll post an update. But um, not awful, but you know, half the price of a of a Ryobi one. Eh. Give them a try. I wouldn't. I probably won't use this battery in the sawzall again. I'll use it in the the low vibration tools, the um, skill saw, drill, that sort of stuff, um, and try not to drop it. So. Yeah. The other one seems to be better. I'll just use that one as a regular battery, and we'll see. So here's my little regular Ryobi battery. This one's making us do more math. It's 24 watt hours. So we'll do have to do more math to get this one figured out. Um, let's see. Let's get this one hooked up the same way, and let's see how many milliamp or amps this guy puts out. Starting timer and do that. Look at that. So about 10 seconds off. So 18 volts. So dropping down. 17. So all right. Let's see. Let's let this one run. Ah, I recorded the whole time. Anyways. We are at, oh, look at that voltage drop now. So, yeah, we're in the bottom end of the battery. So I'm gonna get this down. Uh, when's the cutoff voltage gonna be? Oh, pretty soon. I'm gonna st st stop it if it goes down to 13 and a half. But we're pretty much out. But we're at seven minutes we started a little bit late pretty much exactly what what it's rated for so if it ran for eight minutes which it almost did and running at 10 amps which I can't find my other multimeter which has an amp meter on it but eh, close enough with 10 amps um, 18 volts 10 amps for eight minutes is 1.3 1 one and a third amp hours um, and 24 watt hours that what it says 24 watt hours divided by 18 volts is just what it's rated for so Ryobi battery pack not particularly powerful, but does exactly what it's rated for. 